in the Western Conference. In the Western Conference, it's game two between the New Orleans Hornets and the Denver Nuggets. After a 29-point loss on Sunday, the Hornets tonight will try to steal home court from the Denver Nuggets here at the Pepsi Center. In game one, Chauncey Phillips of the Denver Nuggets hit a franchise record eight threes. Matt that alongside the coach, P.J. Carlissimo, and for the New Orleans Hornets, what must they do tonight here in game two? Well, Matt, they've got to be a much more aggressive team, and New Orleans all year was one of the better defensive teams in the league. They got lit up for 113 points on Sunday. More aggressive, much better defense to be competitive in this building. All right, time for the McDonald's starting lineup. So there's going to be a change on what happens with Chauncey Phillips tonight. Well, Byron Scott's going to put Chris Paul on Chauncey Phillips. He just feels that... CP is smaller, quicker, he can get into him sooner in the backcourt. It was too comfortable the other night for Chauncey Phillips against Rasul Butler, so he's changing that matchup. All right, let's send over to the third member of our broadcast team, Mark Fine. Mark? Well, Matt, you see I've got my finger on my ear here. It's kind of funny. <laughs> despite, despite the noise in this building tonight and the 29-point win in Game 1, when we asked Coach Carl right after that win who had the psychological advantage for Game 2, he said he thought the Hornets did. He knew they were going to come out angry. He was worried about complacency. He did talk to his team about it. When we asked him before the game if he thought the message got through, Coach George Carl said, yeah, I think it did. I like the look on their face during practice and then shoot around before the game today, guys. Mark, for good reason, you had your finger in here. This place is rocking right now and ready for game two. Kenyon Martin, what an outstanding job against David West in game one. They are set. Chris Paul, they need a huge effort out of him once again. Mark Wunderlich, along with Joe DeRosa, Viola Palmer, our three officials, Joe DeRosa in his 20th year. Mark Wunderlich at his 19th, Viola Palmer in her 12th year officiating in the NBA. The Hornets open up with control of the basketball in the pesky Dante Jones on CP3. Tyson Chandler up top. In only his third game since missing 15 with that left ankle. Peja, shot clock down, has to toss it up. Not a good possession to open it up. No, George Carr couldn't be more pleased with that defensive possession, Matt. The initial intent from New Orleans was to pin down and try and get Peja Stojakovic the ball in the middle of the floor. Denver just didn't allow the pass. Clearly the more aggressive team, first possession. This is game two, the last time that Denver led a postseason series, two games to nothing. Carmelo Anthony lights it up. Last time they led to nothing, 1985. It's a few years back. <laughs> you were in grammar school at that time. <laughs> <laughs> and you were at the hall. I was there. Yeah. <laughs> whistle and a foul. And a foul on Dante Jones. Byron Scott. A lot to say about Dante Jones and the way that he was guarding Chris Paul. Well, it's always interesting to watch the beginning of a game, particularly a game two, how the officials are, are going to call it. They watch the tape of the game the same as we do. They saw it was a pretty physical game. They're going to walk the line. They're going to want to let the players play, but they're going to make sure it doesn't get out of control early. Four technicals called in game one. One on Kenyon Martin. Shot him off. Chris Eddie Jones in the double technical in the third quarter. Shot doesn't go. Good defense by Denver. It was outstanding on Sunday night in game one. Kenyon Martin, wide open J. Well, Carmelo Anthony's had the ball twice already. George Carl said he thought it was important that try and help Carmelo. He's not worried Carmelo Anthony's going to have another subpar game, but he thought try and help him. They got him a jump shot in the first play. They posted him up on the second. When they double teamed, he found Kenyon Martin. P.J. started game one 0 of 5, was 4 of 12. And he didn't get his first field goal until late in the second quarter on a layup. Finished with 13. Here's West. So important to the offensive attack of the Hornets. Nice fadeaway. Byron Scott, same intent. Try and help David West. They ran a cross screen for him. Put the ball in his hand early. David West just 4 of 16. Today, driving. On Page Stoyakovich, plus the foul. 
Nene is a big, strong guy, but he's pretty capable of putting the ball on the floor. He actually prefers to go left, but that time he goes to his right. Real good job right there. It's physical inside. Kenyon Martin's trying to front David West. David gets the ball. The difference in that move, he made a quick move. The other night he was more hesitant. He let Kenyon beat him up a little bit. Nuggets are three of three to start, and the Hornets are one of three. Two minutes in here to game two. West backing down on Jones. Misses underneath his own rebound, put back good. Switch by Denver. They switched Kenyon Martin on to Chris Paul. They went against the mismatch. David West just overpowered him inside. Chauncey Phillips really carried Denver in game one in the first half, had 18 of his 36 in the first half. Trying to get everybody else involved here early. And the first miss for the Nuggets on the line drive shot by Martin. Paul using the Chandler screen. West looking for backdoor cut. Now Sue Butler turns it over. That was an issue in game one. 17 turnovers leading to 20 points. Yeah, this is a team that doesn't turn the ball over New Orleans very much. By 12 and a half a game, one of the better numbers in the league. Denver's a dangerous team. No one to turn over against anybody, but particularly against a team that's as good in the open floor as Denver Nuggets are. Nene, quick move on Chandler with the hook. Pops out West, clears it down to Paul. Paul looks underneath Chandler, knocked away by Carmelo Anthony. And last touch by the Hornets, it's Nuggets basketball. Aggressive defense. New Orleans was looking for the quick post up at Carmelo Anthony with the aggressive play right there. Then he's hustling for it. Pacia Stoyakovich tried to keep it in bounds, could not. Mark on a crossover. Drives contested by West and a whistle and a foul. And Hornets. Are they able to handle right now that early burst of energy of the Denver Nuggets? Well, they responded, and they're meeting the aggression, which I think is more important. Even the turnover last time was Sewell Butler with a hard cut off the ball. David West fired him inside. They're not standing around as much as they did on Sunday. Nuggets have missed their last three after making their first three. David West spotting up, drills it over Martin. Byron Scott called it. He said he thought David West was too hesitant the other night. He said, when you get it, pull the trigger. That's what he's done so far. No hesitation there. West, three of four, has all six now for the Hornets. Up and under move, Carmelo Anthony. Too easy. That's going to be a decision for Byron Scott because Denver loves to post up Carmelo. Here's Paul. Slips through, drives, saves it for Tyson Chandler. And Tyson Chandler so long and athletic, despite being slowed by that ankle injury. Ties it up at eight. Double comes with Butler and a foul on Rasul Butler. Chris Paul's penetration is so good. He could have shot this also, but he waits. He draws the A, then he just puts it up in the air. Tyson Chandler finishes. Again, he reads so well. Chris Paul, as he's coming off the screen, he knows where David West is. He puts the ball in his hand for an open shot. Carmelo squares up on Stoyakovic. Shake Jimmy, pull back good. Three of three. Well, that's the dilemma with Carmelo Anthony. He can overpower you inside, but he's got a good mid-range and deep jumper. On the drive. New Orleans has made four straight. Ball is first bucket. Jones swings it to Nene. Another 10 of the shot clock. And a clear out for Carmelo. Fires as Butler comes to contest. And he's got it rolling. Before Rasul could even get there, Carmelo just arched back and, and knocked down the shot. Aggression, Byron Scott wanted it. They've got that. Not a lot of defense yet. And talking to George Carl about the importance of getting Carmelo going. He said, hey, we want to get him going in some early offense. They don't want him to go up against the teeth of the defense, and right now what he's getting is easy. He's getting it. It's against the set defense, and that doesn't bode well for New Orleans. Carmelo misfires there. It's a mini heat check right there. 
You're hot, but not that hot. Is that what you're saying, PJ? Well, that was maybe <laughs> another pass or two. Chris Paul, no, put back. Last touch by Chandler, and it's going to be Nuggets basketball. And Paul, one to three to start. But the good news for New Orleans, he's getting to the rim. He's getting into the basket, gets his little floater inside, or he's finding people off his penetration. Had another postseason double-double. In game one, did Chris Paul, the man up and under, left hand, shot no, and West comes down with it, and that's his fifth rebound already. I like the fact that the officials are letting him play. Here's Paul going to the rim, kick out a wide open three for Butler, and he drills it. Chris Paul is controlling the game on the New Orleans end of the floor. Three different people are controlling it on the Denver end. New Orleans with their first advantage. Phillips in a post up. West comes with a double. Spins away from it. And a foul on Paul. Count it. And Chauncey Phillips to the line. That's a careless foul by Chris Paul. He fought Chauncey took the fadeaway jump shot. They already had the double team there. He's got to let him shoot it. If he's going to pressure him, it's okay, but you can't commit a foul. So he just reaches in, makes this an easy call for the officials. He's got to be smart in that. Adjustments, PJ. Number one adjustment, Chauncey Billups. He scored 36 points, eight for nine from the three-point line because too many times he was allowed to dribble in, get his feet set. They've got to pick Chauncey up much higher, at least at half court, and contest his three-point shots. David West inside, he's battling Kenyon Martin. They've got to get him the ball in better position. He's got to attack quicker. The big matchup right there, he's going to put Byron Scott is going to put Chris Paul on Chauncey Billups, a smaller, quicker player who can pick him up higher. Well, it's too early to tell Matt whether the Chauncey Billups Chris Paul adjustment is going to work, but you got to like David West. He's not settling. See, he accepted the ball on Sunday, and then Kenyon started leaning on him. He waited too long to attack Kenyon Martin. David West adjustment looks very good. West with the first six for the New Orleans Hornets. Three, five, six points, five rebounds. And a major issue in game one, rebounding. Minus 14 for the Hornets, and right now they're plus six. Well, they're doing a good job in both teams. 58% for Denver, 50% for New Orleans. Neither coach is happy about their defense right now. West gives it up. Here's Butler hit one there earlier, gets another. Rasul Butler drills it. And the Hornets back up by one. Quick move underneath. Carmelo double cuts Chandler. Nene can't finish. Contested and denied by West. Denver basketball. Good aggressive basketball, both teams. I like it. Carmelo attacks the rim. Tyson Chandler with good help. Again, the players are banging. The defense is out in. Dante Jones and the offense is in with J.R. Smith. <laughs> Get some fresh bodies in. Uh, J.R. Smith, 19 points in game one after starting 0 of 4. He didn't even hit a three. Rasul Butler back on Chauncey Billups right now. The feed, Martin can't handle. Regains control, unable to finish in a foul on Chandler. Kenyon Martin's upset. Chauncey Billups made a good read, just a quick pick and roll. Kenyon Martin is very good, almost slipping the screen and going right to the basket. But interestingly there, you saw Chauncey Billups guarding JR and Rasul Butler. Excuse me, Rasul Butler back on Chauncey Billups. Kenyon Martin, a history with Byron Scott, of course, in New Jersey as he misfires the first one, 60% on the season from the free throw line. Didn't attempt a free throw. He had a game number one. He went to the NBA Finals in his first two years. Played in 40 playoff games in his first two years in the NBA. This is his ninth year, fifth already here in Denver. A total of 51 playoff games in his first three seasons in 11 cents. He's an all-star in 04. He's an all-rookie player. Kenny Martin's accomplished a lot. His biggest problem recently has been his health. He's missed a lot of games, including basically an entire season. Microfracture surgery on both knees. J.R. Smith climbs up, grabs out a rebound. Smith going behind the back on Paul. Uses the Martin screen momentarily. 
And knocked out of bounds by Paul. Sneaky defense there. Good, aggressive defense by Chris Paul. He saw his hands move and stopped an open pass. Kenyon Martin would have had the ball. I don't know if he would shot the three, but he'd have been in good position. Shooting the three is Phillips. And the first one rattles out. Rasul was in the vicinity, but I think, again, Byron would like him to be even tighter. <laughs> you know, talking to Rasul Butler, he said that I had to respect his ability to drive, and so that concerned me, and he was stepping back off of him. Well, and that's fine early in the game. When a guy goes eight for nine, you say to him, Rasul, that's a good point. When we get to the third quarter, it's no longer a good point. After you hit four in the, the third quarter, maybe you want to get up on him. Here's West. The other day, shot doesn't go, and Melo comes down with the rebound. The players can adjust, too. It's not just the coaches that have to make adjustments. The players can read that. High low feet, kick it back outside. Carmelo the three. Tapped out, second chance opportunity. Martin's going to take it. Tracked down by West. Very seldom when you don't shoot the ball initially. If you don't think it's a good idea initially, it's probably not a good idea two seconds later. James Posey on the floor, just one of five attacking. And they're looking for a big game out of James Posey. And Byron Scott said he felt doesn't necessarily, necessarily have to be huge numbers, but they need him to be more aggressive. That last basket's the definition of aggressive. Set a tone. He does it on the defensive end, but they just need a little bit more offensively. As Byron Scott mentioned, here comes the Birdman. You'll hear it here at the Pepsi Center. As soon as he comes in, it electrifies the crowd. That last defensive possession, Matt, though, is just what you were talking about. When Chauncey does put the ball on the floor and attack the Sewell Butler, it's very difficult for him to move his feet. We got free throws already, five team fouls, still looking at three minutes plus in the first quarter. Butler picked up his second shot of marks on the floor for the Hornets with West Posey, Paul, and Butler, and Butler over having a long conversation with a Mark Wunderlich. And Chauncey Phillips, just such a great, calm demeanor. He can handle everything that's thrown at him. Well, he's not only the commander in chief, he was the uh, weapons man the other night <laughs> because he was fired in from long range, eight for nine. And also the defense secretary, that's what he said. He said, you know, hey, wait a minute. Everybody's talking about my threes, but from a defensive standpoint, we got a dunk. I think sometimes Chauncey gets tired of hearing about all the young guards in the league. He, you know, very few of the young guards, in fact, none of the young guards have accomplished what Chauncey Billups has. At 32 years of age in his 12th year out of Colorado. Finals MVP, averaged 21 points for Detroit. Shot clock at seven. The Birdman on Paul. And Anderson and Paul get tied up underneath. There was a whistle prior to that. his first well there's our matchup and again George Carl is comfortable Chris Anderson moves his feet very very well but that's not the matchup you probably want leaving his feet inside Phillips in threes a lot of them he set a franchise record for threes made in the postseason with eight of them one shy of a playoff record of nine Held by Ray Allen, Rex Chabot, and Vince Carter. Here they come, Coach. Well, the problem you can see, too many of them, he's open. There's not a hand in his face. People aren't picking him up quick enough. That was the one that blew the game open late in the third quarter. But what Byron Scott was upset about, it wasn't all Rasul Butler. There were a lot of those were in transition. When you're back in backpedal in the transition, and Chauncey Phillips has the ball, you don't backpedal. You go up and meet him. It's even better if he dribbles by you and makes it two. You don't give him an open look at it, too, particularly on a night when he's hitting everything he looks at. Finished with 36 in rhythm, transition threes. And a foul is going to be called. And it's on Kenyon Martin with 2.51 to remaining here in this first quarter. And Posey's going to step to the line in a bonus situation. And Kenyon Martin picking up his first. This summer, Nathan Ford and his team are back in TNT's smash hit Leverage. Don't miss the new season premiere of Leverage this July only on TNT.
Henry Martin's never going to get out of anybody's way. If he's got an opportunity to hit somebody, he's going to hit him. But coming out of the timeout, they already committed four fouls. Got to show a little bit of discretion. You don't want to just hand him two points. They just did, and New Orleans up by two. J.R. Smith with Phillips, Chris Anderson, Carmelo, and Kenyon Martin. Here's Carmelo quickly, gives it to Martin. Quick move by Sean Marks, lays it up and through. Sean Martin's got to do a better job. You take a chance with Kenyon Martin shooting the jump shot. You don't let him beat you to the rim that easily. Kenyon Martin, five points, has four assists. Steal, J.R. Smith, and a blocking foul on James Posey. And bonus now for Denver. I think Chris Paul got caught in between. He was looking at Sean Marks going to the basket and James Posey out on the perimeter. Wasn't sure who to throw the ball to, and he just kind of put it up in the air. The real problem, though, the contact, you're going to walk 94 feet at two more free throws. J.R. Smith selected 18th overall by New Orleans in 2004 at a St. Benedict's Prep in New Jersey as he misses the first one, a 75% free throw shooter during the regular season was three or four in game one had a career best performance fifth year third year in Denver and he's still only 23 years of age the maturity process kind of happening with him except in that roll off of the bench it's, it's happening a little slowly but again he, he played it <laughs> you got a bad smile on your face well he played it safe Benedict's for former point guard of mine Danny Hurley and he's coming along there's no question but you hit it on the head you got to realize he's only 23 as George Carl says he's a good bad player yeah. but a lot more good and when he is good watch out lights out Here's Posey, triggers the three, got it. That's what Byron Scott mentioned. Not only that, that's what he was acquired for. Everybody saw him make it to May, April, May, and June last year for the Boston Celtics. James Posey's been to the finals twice. A ring with Miami and a ring last season with the Boston. There's Martin slicing through with the slam. New Orleans by one. West. Pulls up over Martin, shot doesn't go. And Wes, after making his first three, has missed five in a row, and Devin Brown off of the bench. A little instant offense from New Orleans. Chauncey, the three, got it! Devin Brown made a mistake. He leaves Chauncey Billups to help out. You don't leave Chauncey Billups. Until, until you see that he's going to miss a couple. He's given no evidence of that yet. Another minute remaining here in the first 12 minutes of game two. Ball over Chauncey Billups. Shot doesn't go. Long rebound for Billups. Tied at 25. And Posey, watch out. Posey just picked up his second. A concern for Byron Scott now. Well, we see right there, Devin Brown goes over to help. I mean, that sounds like a good idea. It's not a good idea to leave Chauncey Billups. That's just too easy right there. Neither team is adjusting. They've both been in the bonus since about the three-minute mark. You've got to play a little more carefully. There's too many free throws here. It's not even good offense. People are just bringing the ball up the court. There's too many sloppy fouls. You know, Matt, at practice yesterday, George Carl must have told his team three different times, what I'm really worried about is if New Orleans gets the three-point shot going. He calls it the three-ball. He yeah. said they get the three-ball going. They've got it going right now. There's no question about that. He was, he was worried that that was the way they could pick up their offense. They may have to adjust. There's been a lot of corner threes, and then James Posey knocking out the one on top. Hornets three of three from downtown. Phillips with 10 points, 10 of the 27. Getting to the free throw line now. Five of five from the line is Phillips, one of the best in the NBA. 20 second differential game clock, shot clock. Paul, head fake, crossover, sends it to West. Trying to fire over Martin on the weak side. Marks loses the handle, and after a great start by David West, he is now three of nine. I thought that last possession was more what Byron Scott had talked about the other night. He was a little hesitant. When he first got the ball, he could have taken the jumper almost from the corner. Yeah, it's a good idea to go, but again, go quickly. I think he was more quick and aggressive with his moves early in this quarter.
Looks like differential game clock, shot clock. Phillips with Brown on him. Chauncey makes the move to the hole. No! The Birdman man can't finish. Chris Anderson unable to finish off of the miss. Violation for hanging on the rim. He's got great instincts. He gets to the rim so quick following shots. He just couldn't get his hand on the ball. Grab the rim instead. Marks off the mark with an air ball. Game one, the score was 27-25. All right, welcome back to Denver, 27-25. Nuggets with the lead coach. Two days of talking after a disappointing game one for your for your team. How do you feel about how they responded here in the first quarter? Well, I think they responded pretty well, to be honest with you. We made some mistakes, you know, when we started bringing guys in off the bench on the defensive end, and they got some layups and got going a little bit. But other than that, I thought we did a pretty good job. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank Matt, you. back to you. 27-25, a slow start for Chris Paul. Just. One of four. You look at the Hornets, though, shooting overall 46% Both the field. Both teams identical, Matt, 10 for 22. But how's this for unusual? 10 baskets for Denver, 10 assists. Even with the home, home court scoring, that's very unusual. <laughs> we talked about the 10 assists. Five of them by Carmelo Anthony. That is already a playoff career best. And four by Kenyon Martin. The big guys have nine and the 10 assists. You like that as a coach, don't you? Absolutely. Getting it, doubles coming, giving it up. Shot clock down to five. Posey backing down over Anthony Carter. Just checked in, graces the rim. Mark saves it. It grazed the rim. Mark appeared, and they're saying no. I'll go with you, partner, but Joe DeRosa, Mark Wonderlich, and Violet Palmer are going the other way. And so it goes the other way. Anthony Carter with Nene. Carmelo Anthony. Chris Anderson on the floor with J.R. Smith. Carmelo over Mark. Shot no, and West comes down with it. His eighth rebound. Good job by Sean Marks moving his feet, staying in front of Carmelo Anthony. Tough check for him. West swings it. Posey quickly in the corner. Veteran Antonio Daniels gives it up. West has it in once again. Brown saves it. Good roll reversal tonight. The bigs from Denver are getting the assist. The smalls from New Orleans are getting the offensive rebounds. That's Devin Brown's second one converted both times. Not at it. 27. J.R. Smith tears the three. 0 oh, 7 from downtown in game one. A rare sight for him, 39% during the regular season. Just trailed by one step, but one step's all J.R. Smith needs to get the shot off. Posey finds West. The length of Anderson on it, up and under. Count it. And a foul. And David West going to head to the free throw line. Really good move there, Matt. The up and under is a great call because we watch what he does. He comes into the lane, and he gets him up in the air, and then he makes sure there's contact. He could have made that shot and just gotten two points, but he had Anderson up in the air. He just leaned in enough to cause some contact. He's still strong enough to finish the shot. He's got the opportunity for three. Really good offensive move by David West. And the first six points for New Orleans. He now has eight points total. And he started three of three. He's now four of 11. And the two-time All-Star from the free throw line. Time once again. Anderson sends it to Nene. Nene. And a travel and a turnover. And only the second turnover by Denver. He's turned it over five times. Yeah, the, the biggest difference I thought in the first quarter, the Nuggets did a good job getting to the free throw line. They got 10 free throws, New Orleans only two. What kept him in the game was knocking down the three three point shots. Chauncey Billups doing it once again. Carmelo got off early, the other guys chipped in. Julian Wright with Tyson Chandler. Daniels. Got it away, J.R. Smith. Hustling, Posey. Last touch, Denver, New Orleans ball. George Carl furious with the call. 
That's very sporting of him, though. He's trying to help Joe DeRosa. He thinks Joe didn't really see it correctly. He's trying to just tell it from his angle. He thought it was the other way. Coaches in the league do that all the time. You've never Matt. done that, though. Well, sometimes I do. Really? When you feel that they're out of position, you try and help them out whenever you can. <laughs> it's a technique. The league stresses that. If you don't see it, look for help from your partner. But I think sometimes they should look to the bench for help. To the coach, yeah. And then would they have to go back to the other bench to get help? No, you can't do that. <laughs> Cozy. Air ball. Underneath. And they're going to call a foul. Yes, foul prior to the shot clock violation. Wow, this is a tough possession. George Call really upset. James Posey had no choice but to launch the shot. He wasn't really comfortable. Tyson Chandler saw it coming. That happens a lot on those long threes in air ball. Good read by Chandler. Foul on the day as we send it over to Mark Fine. Mark? Well, as Tyson Chandler goes to the line, guys, he's only taken two shots now on the night. And interesting to watch how his foot holds up throughout the day right after game one he was sitting with both feet in ice i asked him how his foot was during the game and he said you know he just couldn't move off the pick and rolls couldn't rotate on defense as well and when i asked him at practice about it yesterday he said i've just got to try and keep the swelling down coach when a guy's talking about keeping the swelling down i'm assuming that's not a good thing no it's not good mark but what is good byron scott saying he doesn't expect tyson chandler to be what he is when he's 100 percent he just wants him to keep getting a little bit stronger game by game he didn't play for about three weeks they're just looking for improvement and hopefully extend the series tyson chandler to get better the deeper he gets into the series he played only 13 of the final 44 games, and as Byron Scott mentioned to us, this is only his third game back after that long stretch. From March 2nd, 2nd to April yep. 15th. That's a long time. A little give and go with AD. Shot doesn't go. Minus plays on the floor for Denver, along with Carter, Smith, Manet, and Anderson. Plays a slices through. AC driving. And Anthony Carter shot off the mark as Chandler sends it quickly to Antonio Daniels. Tyson didn't even get off his feet, but he did a good job boxing out. And then he got the rebound with both feet on the floor. Daniels with Posey, Stoyakovich right in Chandler. And Page again at Roland. Shot doesn't go. He missed games with back spasms. That was the look they wanted on the first possession of the game, and they couldn't get Page to open out of that pin down. Now 0 with 3. J.R. Smith, too strong. Strong side forward for Posey. New Orleans doing an outstanding job on the glass at plus 10 already. The lead by one here in game two. Posey fires. On the back side, J.R. Smith able to take it down. Smith crossover. Chandler. And it goes right to Posey. Here's Daniels. With Paul resting. And slowed down into the half court. And a timeout taken by Byron Scott. And one of the things that Byron told us, he wanted to get that tempo moving a little bit. His team's playing aggressive. That's more important. He's got the second line guys for both teams on the floor. They're more than holding their own. Jazz tomorrow right here on TNT and earlier tonight Orlando even this series had won with a victory over Philadelphia 96 87 and then Miami took Atlanta 108 93 led by Dwayne Wade with 33 points New Orleans can get the job done tonight it'll only be the 1-8 matchups that went 2-0 New Orleans doing a very good job on the offensive board. Six offensive boards, seven one second chance points. And turnover the sixth. Denver has yet to capitalize off of the turnovers like they did in game one, scoring 20 points off of the 17. Renee shot no. Birdman puts it back up and through Chris Anderson. Six turnovers, now four points off of the turnovers. And Denver back up by one. That is their only second field goal here in the second quarter and all that and now Chauncey Billups and here comes Billups heading to the official scorers table Daniels Carter doesn't have the numbers underneath plus the foul 
Nene and Chandler now with a few words for one another. That started on the last possession, Matt, probably even started earlier in the game, but the last possession, Tyson Chandler was very physical, did a good job defending Nene, forced him to settle for that shot that Chris Anderson was able to convert with the offensive rebound, so that's been bubbling over a little bit. Anthony Carter has always had the reputation of being a point guard who pushes the ball, so his bigs are always going to run for him. We had him in San Antonio a few years back. He ups the tempo in the game. The players know if they run, AC is going to reward him. And they runs extremely well for a big, one of the better running bigs in the entire league. Chandler picks up his second. Nene and Chandler double technicals. Six technicals now in the first two games of this series with Denver leading by three. Surakovich backing down on Carter. And he's going to head to the line. Good recognition there on the post up. A smaller Carter and Surakovich trying to back in and get going just over the three. Oh, he, he looked uncomfortable. The two shots he was well defended early, but that one he recognized the mismatch, took advantage of it. You can pretty much anticipate when there's a double technical on one end and it starts to get a little physical, they're going to call it tight on the other end. Peja Stojakovic took advantage of that. Max Spasms, he was out for 15 games, played in the final eight games. Played in just 10 games in the month of March and April, and he averaged just nine points. Well, he's typical of a number of the New Orleans players. The biggest difference in New Orleans, the great year they had this year, and slipped a little bit this season. Too many injuries. You have a whole lot of guys that played a lot less games than they did. Phillips fouled in the end and finishes. Chauncey Phillips controlling the game. Chauncey Billups is very physical. Anderson with the good screen. Then Chauncey seizes the opening. Julian Wright tried to help out, but Chauncey's just too strong. Once he was able to bump off Antonio Daniels, he created the crease and finished the shot. 13 points now for Billups, 6 to 6 from the free throw line. Drives on Fraser, denied by Anderson, and four blocks in game one. Phillips drives hard, behind the back, Nene with the finish. Smooth, smooth with the left hand behind the back. Nene with the good hands to catch it. Known in the NBA as Mr. Big Shot, but he said, hey, I've been called smooth since high school, and you see why. Everybody here in Denver knows him as smooth. Does he got it going? Oh, the Birdman does! Antonio Daniels tries to go to the rim. Anderson denies. They push it up. Chauncey Billups draws the help. Left hand, no look. Nene with the finish. Long shot, falls in the air. Everybody else is standing on their feet. Birdman swoops in for the finish. Down on and by Applebee's. It's a whole new neighborhood. Mark Five back in Denver. Last season, Chris Birdman Anderson spent some time in the seats here in Denver while on suspension. I asked him after game one if he took some time to reflect on that. He said he purposely doesn't look backwards. He wants to focus on today. He also said since he's a Denver guy, worked out here, played here while he was on suspension, he thinks the adoration of the crowd here is as much for the fact that he's a Denver guy as for all the antics that he has on the court. That coach... Chris Anderson to make it a difference coming off of the bench and of course played with the New Orleans Hornets. A 
and played with him last year. They signed him after a two-year NBA suspension for violating substance abuse. He played in just five games last year. That's behind Great story. Him. Fortunately, people get distracted by the hair and the tats. He's a very good basketball player. A Texas native went to Flint Junior College in College Station, Texas. And then went to China and played basketball and all over the world before finding a home here in Denver. It's Phillips. That's 15 now. Pick and roll, good screen set by Chris Anderson. Tyson Chandler's got to come up. Same way we talked about the guards have to pick up Johnson Phillips higher. The bigs have to pick him up higher in pick and roll situations. 13 to 2 run. West. Butler. Here's Carter, a frantic pace. Phillips back at the line. Well, they're getting after it again. You see Tyson Chandler in the nay down there. That's, that certainly could have been called. Those two are mixing it up. You know, New Orleans, this last offensive possession, Matt, they got to grab the ball with two hands on the offensive boards. They're tipping it up too much. Phillips at the free throw line. Chris Paul back in after that last timeout, after a long rest, eighth in the NBA in minutes played. Early on in the quarter, it didn't hurt them. Both teams were struggling. You had a lot of bench personnel on the floor. Neither team was able to score, but Denver got their guys in a little bit, and Denver got a little more production from their bench, and they've opened it up right now. This is one of those dangerous runs. It's not like that 21 zip run at the end of the third quarter. 21 to 0 was Phillips and J.R. Smith. They had 16 to the 21. Anderson is now out. Denver was plus 14 with him on the floor. Paige Stojakovic fading along the end line. Good sign for Byron Scott as Paige makes his first field goal. Ten point game. Phillips just so strong on the pull up. No. And Chandler is there with a the rebound. Prior to that, Denver had scored six straight possessions. Paul, can he get it rolling? Shot no. And Martin comes down with it and clears it quickly to Phillips. This ball just one of five. Carmelo to the cutting Carter. Into a crowd deflected out of bounds off of New Orleans Denver's basketball. After a tight first quarter, PJ, in the second unit. And Chauncey Billups here in the second quarter really doing the job for Denver. Well, Denver's bench ignited their team. Chris Anderson with a great job, but New Orleans frontline guys have gone MIA here in the second quarter. Very similar to the other night. New Orleans just had a couple of quarters where they could not score against Denver's defense. Underneath, Carmelo with the slam. Ten points now for Carmelo Anthony. 47-35. Paul finds Chandler. Maybe with a healthy ankle. And a foul. Denver bench, you see they're ranked third in the league. But again, that's just, a, that's a number. They, they change games. You know, there's a lot of games where bench people come in late and get some soft points. These guys come in when they trail, when it's a close game, they open up a margin. They've really helped this team. Chauncey Phillips talked about it yesterday at practice. He thinks it's the key to their team, the production they get off their bench. Blocking foul. New Orleans struggling to get into an offensive rhythm. Just three for their last 17. When Chauncey Billups came to Denver in a November trade with Detroit, it was a return home for Billups. Chauncey attended George Washington High School about 15 minutes south of here in Denver. Won two Colorado State high school titles. He could have gone anywhere in the country. He decided to go about 45 minutes away. 
to Boulder. Played two seasons there at the University of Colorado, averaging better than 18 points, five rebounds, and five assists. Led the Buffaloes to their first NCAA tournament berth in 28 years, and since he has returned into this game, Denver on a 17-4 run, PJ. Now, Chauncey Billups is now, he's closing in on six straight quarters with no turnovers, and he actually carried over from the end of the regular season a couple of quarters where he didn't turn the ball over. He, it was a great decision. He stayed home to play for Joe Harrington and then Ricardo Patton at the University of Colorado loves it. And he was so delighted when he got the chance to come home. And he's showing it by the way he's playing for these Denver fans. Selected by Boston back in 1997. Found, finally found a fit really in Minnesota. They were the free agent signed to Detroit, and that's where things took off. That one year with Flip into Minnesota and then going to Detroit. Well, you forget how many people struggle in their first place or two. You need to be in the right system with the right teammates, sometimes with the right coach. But a lot of players who've gone on to become all-stars, real impact players in this league, have struggled in their first stop or two. 47-37 here as we send it to Ernie Johnson in Atlanta. EJ? Yeah, Southwest Airlines game break standing by for the T-Mobile halftime report. Kenny and Chuck will offer their analysis of the Hornets and Nuggets. We'll have highlights of the Heat and Hawks. And on inside, complete highlights and all the post-game yakety yak. Now back to Denver, Matt. All right, thank you so much. We look forward to that as the Nuggets lead by 10 here. Hornets struggling in the second. Can't get any offense going. They made just three field goals. Paul finds Butler. It's a three and it's good. That's a welcome three because they made just three out of their first 17 shots. Only had 10 points for Sewell Butler. The corner three, the short corner three, has been very good for the Hornets. Hornets four of eight here in the first half. A seven point game now. Was 12. Posey on Billups. Shot clock down to five. And a defensive three second violation is going to be charged to New Orleans with Tyson Chandler. Technical foul, and Chauncey Billups is going to step to the strike. Chauncey fourth in the NBA in free throw shooting. 91%. Denver number one in the NBA in free throw attempts. This is going to be their 15th tonight. They attack the basket. Don't usually get them off the defensive threes, but they're an aggressive offensive team. Once again, 18 points for Chauncey Billups in the first half. This time getting them completely different, as you talked about attacking. Nine of nine from the free throw line. Martin. Shot clock down to four. Trying to create contact, does, but it's an offensive foul. And dangerous for Posey, who already has two. Martin picks it up. You His said, second. You said trying to create contact. There's no question. <laughs> Kenny Martin always tries to create contact. James Posey hung in there and took the charge. James Posey very good. Not normally off, off the post situation. He's very good at stepping in on the weak side and drawing charges. Hand off to Paul. Uh, Posey. And prior to that, three-second violation on New Orleans and another turnover. That's key here with 132 remaining in the second quarter in an eight-point game. The eighth turnover by the Hornets. But well, when you're not shooting the ball well, and New Orleans clearly isn't, you can't afford turnovers. That's eight already for a team that only averages 12 and a half a game. Game two. Denver took game one, 113-84. Martin spinning. Martin finishes. That's the move. Kenyon Martin puts it on the floor. As soon as he sees resistance, he loves to spin and finish. Chandler. Chandler. Five points, eight rebounds. Good look. The margin for error is not quite the same because he's not as explosive. It used to be all Chris Paul had to do was throw it up in the air and he'd go get it. Got to be a little careful now. J.R. Smith drives. J.R. Smith coming off of the bench has five points.
back to a 10 point advantage. J.R. Smith's improving with his ball skills. He'll still turn it over occasionally when he tries to go to the rim. But everybody plays him. They get into him. They try and take away the three. That's the middle game and the finish. That's what he's got to develop. Ball gives it up. Here's Posey. It's a three. Shot no. Ball knocks it away. Chauncey Billups comes down with it. Two second differential. Game clock, shot clock. You see the veteran telling JR, relax. JR's flocking at the mouth. He's not going to relax. <laughs> Just give me the ball. I'll fire the three. Shot clock down to four. Carmelo in the lane. Contested. Plenty of time as Posey drives. And a foul on JR Smith. Excellent defense that time by New Orleans. As the playoffs get underway, you'll be able to see all the action on TNT and beyond. Here's what you'll see in the coming days on NBA TV, ESPN, and ABC. Already a fantastic start to the 2009 NBA playoffs. The idea was a good idea by Chauncey Billups. Let's take it down to the wire and let's get a good shot. Really didn't get as good a shot as they wanted, but I credit that to good defense by New Orleans. This is a bad foul right here. New Orleans with a chance. They're certainly not happy, but it's a big difference. It could have been 12 the other way. Said they got a chance to get out what? under 10, which you always feel good about. It was eight in game one at halftime. 55 47. Foul is on Smith, his second. Posey gets both. And Posey with nine first half points. Point five left. Smith tosses it up. And the first half comes to a close 52 to 44. An eight point advantage for the Denver Nuggets. Carmelo and Anthony with 10 points. But Chauncey Billups doing it once again with 18. And what kind of second half? Will Chris Paul have just one of five in the first half as we send it over to Mark Fine and Chauncey Billups? Mark? Chauncey, we got to stop meeting like this, man. After game one, did you ever expect that you would get that many looks and that many points again in the first half? Well, I mean, they made some adjustments. I didn't get as many walk-up threes and transition stuff. They made some adjustments, but, you know, we got a lot of options, man. They can't stop everybody. All right, everybody's going to look at the PTS up there on the scoreboard, but I know you're probably happier about the defense your team played here in the first defense half. Defense has been great. You know, um, Chris has broke, broke us down a lot. You know, you can't control them the whole game, but um, we're trying to keep them off the three-point line. They got a couple good ones. They ran some flares and stuff like that, broke us down, but we'll look at it at halftime and hopefully come out and make some adjustments. All right, thanks. Good luck in a second. Thank you, man. Thank you. All right, don't go anywhere. Coming up after a short timeout, T-Mobile Halftime Report. EJ, Kenny, and Charles back in our Atlanta studios. Keep it here on TNT.